Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, early voting is now underway through April 21st in Montgomery County. Some residents in Tobytown are asking county leaders for bus service to their Potomac community. And later, we'll preview Rockville Science Day, which is just around the corner. But we begin in our state's capital, where the legislative session wrapped up this week. Lorna Virgili was in Annapolis and joins us with more. Lorna? Sonia, this was a quick gathering with the mayor of the city of Baltimore and several county executives from the state of Maryland. And mostly they came here to Annapolis to praise the work of their delegations. The mayor of the city of Baltimore called it a difficult session plagued with partisanship, but with progress. Hard work. I know there's a number of pieces of legislation that, that we are optimistic and hopeful uh, that the governor will sign. I'm hoping that, that we'll get to where we need to be on uh, critical issues like police reforms, and that's what mm -hmm. sign to die is all, always about. Uh, pulling a rabbit out of the hat at the last minute to make, uh, to make sure that in these 90 days, Maryland continues to move forward. The county executives from Frederick and Arundel, Charles, Baltimore, and Prince George's County came together to highlight some of the accomplishments during the 90-day session. The people of Maryland are going to have a first-class, world-class hospital system in Prince George's County thanks to the work of these men and women behind me. Thanks to the work, that's right. And thanks to their work, we're going to able, be able to get not just school funding for our children, but build the schools we need. Thank you very much, General Assembly. Thank you, delegates and senators. That's the kind of work that we want to see happen. From Montgomery County, Executive Ike Leggett described it as improvement, as the county will be receiving additional funding for school construction, $37 million for construction at the universities at Shady Grove, and $33 million in credit from the state related to the wind case. We've had some very difficult challenges related to the wind case. And we had, through the efforts of Richard Manolino, Senator Kagan, and many in, in the delegation of Montgomery County and around the state, the speaker and others, to ensure that we get some relief. And we have that relief. Uh, that relief, for example, will allow us to extend the payments for wind much longer and start later. For Montgomery County, it would allow us to significantly reduce the tax increase that I've asked because part of it is built upon the wind case. Some disappointing measures that will impact Montgomery County include a higher contribution from the county to build the Purple Line. There's a lot that we still have to do. You know, we have made a lot of progress this session. There's some things on the Purple Line that move forward, but also Montgomery County's kind of taking it a little bit more on the chin when it comes to the cost for the Purple Line. Um, the Watkins Mill interchange, again, moving forward, but after a, a, a fairly divisive battle in order to force it to, to move forward. In Annapolis, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgilio. At the headquarters of the Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission, Transportation and Environment Committee members from Montgomery and Prince George's counties convened to discuss the Purple Line and WSSC issues. Susan Kennedy reports. The meeting took place exactly one day after the Board of Public Works approved a contract with a team of private builders to construct the 16-mile Purple Line. T&E Committee Chair Roger Berliner observed the step signaled a new day for both counties. Many people thought it would never happen, and now we have a signed agreement, and we are going to start digging dirt as of Monday on Elm Street. Purple Line Transit Partners will build the project that's estimated to cost more than $5 billion. The contractor will build and operate the light rail line that will run from Bethesda to New Carrollton. Things are going to start happening, uh, a project that's so critical to both counties' financial future, the quality of life is really going to make a big difference. Along the Purple Line corridor, what we're seeing is kind of revitalization of those areas starting. I think the Purple Line will um, expand that opportunity along those lines. Both Montgomery and Prince George's County will be kicking in millions of dollars in additional funding to the project. That said, council members say they will be staying on top of construction to be sure residents are not overlooked during the course of the build out. We slowed down the traffic on Wayne Avenue and just lowered the uh, speed limit from 30 to 25. Um, and there's going to be a lot of noise reduction, including some no temporary noise walls and others to make sure that the, the, uh, the bad effects of construction um, that, you know, are, are some of are unavoidable. We want to mitigate that as much as possible and, and minimize the neighborhood impact of the construction. 
The Purple Line was not the only topic of discussion at the meeting. WSSC officials were on hand to update both councils on the budget and priorities of the Bi-County Agency. Council President Nancy Florine told the panel though she realizes infrastructure upgrades are necessary, she's concerned about the potential for additional rate increases. We've had significant uh, increases in WSSC rates over the years. I think they were, they were valid, but I'm at the point of saying enough is enough. And I've told w WSSC they have to examine their own house, look at their continuing costs, and look, make some hard decisions about that. In Laurel, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. A new bill that would increase the county's minimum wage to $15 per hour by the year 2020 has been introduced at the council. The measure increases the county's minimum wage after a series of incremental increases are implemented over the next four years. Councilmember Mark Elridge is a lead sponsor of this bill and it has three co-sponsors. Elridge says increasing the wage to $15 per hour keeps up with inflation and the cost of living for low-income workers. This has an enormous impact on families. You know, we only talk about it as a number and is this too much or too low. But what we don't talk about is the impact on families that this the instability that the low wages cause, the stress that it causes between parents, and then the stress that the kids experience, which affects them in school. If people are forced to move every year and if they're insecure economically, all of this is visited on the kids. Residents of Toby Town, a historic neighborhood located right off of River Road near the CNO Canal in Potomac, say they are in need of ride-on bus service. Right now, residents say they have to trek nearly three miles to the nearest ride-on stop. My MC Media's Maureen Trotary reports. The road is not safe. No sidewalks, very little shoulder, very dangerous, and that's with good weather. James Martin has lived in Toby Town for most of his life. It's a tight-knit community located along River Road near the CNO Canal in Potomac. And for the past 10 years, residents have been asking for bus service to connect their historic neighborhood to the rest of the county. Residents of Toby Town say they have to walk between two to three miles to get to the nearest bus stop located on Trivilla Road. We need the bus stop because everybody here don't have a car and there's activities going on out in the world that we need to be a part of. It's bad. I see my cousins walking along the road a lot of times. Um, and I pull over and pick them up. Uh, my nephews, uh, family members, they, some have jobs, they walk to work or they'll get a ride and then they'll get stuck and have to walk back. For me, I have to ask my uncle to take me to work because he, he goes to work like the same time, like six in the morning. But when he gets off, he doesn't get off like around my time, so. Sometimes I have to walk like, like four miles or like three miles to go home, you know. Martin made the case for bus service at a Montgomery County Council public hearing for the fiscal 2017 budget. It's common sense. You're gonna, if you put a bus out here about a quarter mile from the you know, Potomac River, CNO Canal, that brings that river that much closer to you, a mile away from ride on. Anybody that's on ride on. So that's going to bring it in riders. It's not about Toby Town, it's about time. It's just something about time. Just, we have a transit running out this way. It's 2016. It's uh, a community that needs a little more help. And so my colleagues and I, I think, will do right by Toby Town and provide them more bus service. In Potomac, I'm Maureen Chaudhary for County Report This Week. Some residents in Bethesda are protesting the West Bard Sector Plan. Dozens of Bethesda residents took to the streets two days in a row this month to protest the West Bard Sector Plan. Their message was directed to county leaders. The reason we're here is so that they understand that there is local opposition, that we don't agree with what they're planning to do. We want them to delay the vote and give vastly more consideration to the consequences of this plan. The shopping center needs to be redeveloped, but along with the redevelopment, we hate to see so much density that's going to cause so much traffic and it's going to overcrowd our schools and our schools are already overcrowded. The developers and the county council want to overly expand this region, this, this project, the Westboard project, and it, it's uncalled for. We don't want it. 
the whole neighborhood is against it. Council members said they are listening to the residents' concerns and they have significantly reduced the plan. I worked so hard on this plan and reduced the plan by half. The greatest reduction in a plan we've gotten from our planners in our memory. We've never quite had this situation where people have continued to uh, be unhappy after we've really done our best to listen to all sides of all this and put in place county priorities that we believe to be very important. The West Bard sector plan is expected to be back on the council's agenda in early May. You can find more information about the West Bard sector plan on the county council's website. Coming up next on County Report this week, I'll take you to Gaithersburg for a celebration for Arab American Heritage Month. And it's election season. We'll have the latest on early voting. Stay with us. Be part of the fun on April 22nd for a day in the life of Montgomery County. Connect with hundreds as they post pictures and videos. Here's how. Email photos or videos to pics at mymcmedia.org or share them at mymcmedia hashtag DITL. Then visit our website to see what your friends and neighbors have shared of their day. This year, for every submission, a dollar will be donated to Mana Food Center. Join in on the fun April 22nd for a day in the life of Montgomery County. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The presidential primary election is set for April 26th, and early voting is now underway through April 21st. Have you cast your ballot? Some county officials told us they plan to vote early. My wife and I will go uh, an early vote, and uh, last time it was it was pleasurable. I mean, when we went, there were there were not long lines. Hopefully, there'll be more people voting, but there were not long lines. You could get in and get out, and you've certainly done what you need to be doing: the civic responsibility. I will be voting early, and I encourage everybody to be voting early. Tell me why it's important. Well, you never know what's going to happen on the day of election, so. Take care of it. You can take care of it on your time. You don't have a long wait. Get it done early. I think it's really important that everybody get out to vote. I mean, I, I, one of the things that's sad to me is the, the turnout we had the last election. Uh, I think we had about a, an overall voter turnout in Montgomery County of about 17%. Uh, we're better than that. We're better than that, and we need people to engage, to come out, to support whatever candidate they want to support, but we need people to come out and vote. And the fact that we have the early voting is a great opportunity for people to work it into their own schedules, but exercise that very, very important right to vote. Montgomery County wants to make sure its elderly Korean American residents are prepared to vote this election season. The Board of Elections hosted an information session where seniors got a chance to become familiar with the machines. Crystal Park has a story. For many Asian seniors, voting can be intimidating. There could be language barriers, or they may simply be unfamiliar with the process. That's why the Montgomery County Board of Elections, alongside the League of Korean Americans, hosted an informational session to help seniors become comfortable with the new voting machines just in time for primary election day. It's a basic American right afforded to all U.S. citizens, but many Korean American seniors don't exercise their right to vote. For one, they're hesitant about using the new touchscreen machines. I always wondered, how do I vote? I had no one to ask, but today's class was very helpful because we got to see the new machines. For the next election, I'm going to have the confidence to vote enthusiastically. Greg Humes from the Montgomery County Board of Elections demonstrates how to fill out a ballot during a voter empowerment class hosted by the League of Korean Americans. We thought by giving seniors a chance to directly see and try out the machines, they might become more comfortable and familiar with them come election day. Montgomery County recognizes not everyone in its diverse population is comfortable voting in English. The county offers materials in many different languages. To the extent that the county can provide uh, language services, they try to do that. Uh, they have language helplines. Um, and part of our 
outreach process is to sign up community worker volunteers to work on Election Day. Korean Americans are grateful the county is making an effort to include them in the voting process. We would like to get involved more politically so that we will be able to voice our uh, rights. Asian American residents can go to the polls knowing there will be people and resources available to help them navigate the voting machines in their native languages. In Rockville, I'm Crystal Park. The city of Gaithersburg is celebrating Arab American Heritage Month. My MC Media's Willie James Inman reports. Gaithersburg is celebrating the rich cultures of the Arab world. This is an annual event. It's one of a few uh, multicultural receptions we do throughout the year to celebrate different cultures that are part of our community. There was dancing, food, and lots to learn about different Arabic countries. As the city of Gaithersburg hosted a reception in honor of Arab American Heritage Month, some residents expressed concern about the current tone of the 2016 presidential campaign. It's great to see uh, non-Arab heritage uh, residents that's curious about the cultures, would like to know about the cultures, especially with what's going on and what they hear from the outside. So we put people together so they can learn about our culture. We can also they know about uh, Arab Americans, they are part of the society, we are not the new. Americans feel the same way we do. Uh, I think Donald Trump could be qualified to do a certain job, but definitely not to run this country. Local leaders say inclusiveness is important. Our police department has said very, very clearly, both the city of Gaithersburg and Montgomery County, that we will not tolerate any anyone uh, in any way trying to harm someone, as a, it from, whether it be a hate crime or a crime in general. Our Arab American uh, residents and visitors are welcome here. They're cherished and valued. And this event is partially to, to celebrate and, and, and express that on behalf of the city. In Gaithersburg, I'm really James Inman for County Report This Week. Coming up on County Report this week, dozens of parents attend a community dialogue in Gaithersburg that was hosted by Montgomery County Public Schools. And we preview what you can expect to see and experience at Rockville Science Day. Don't go away. County Report this week is coming right back. Springtime is a time for giving. When you donate a can of food, you can ride free on any ride on bus during our Give and Ride food drive. So open your heart and see how far a gift of food can go. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The fields of science will be explored at Rockville Science Day on April 24th. That's where you can learn firsthand about robots, chemistry, astronomy, and more. Rock 11 Now's Kathy Dantzler has details. Science holds the key to our future, so why not explore the world of science at the 27th annual Rockville Science Day? It's Sunday, April 24th, from noon to 5 p.m. on the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. We will have a lot of new, new and a lot of old activities that uh, I'm sure people have come to, to uh, value. Um, the, one of the new ones this year is we are going to have a planetarium. We're going to have a planetarium set up where people can go in and learn about the stars. We are so excited. We have a mobile planetarium this year. It's going to be in the Theater Arts Building. I think a lot of students and children are um, going to experience this for the first time, maybe. Uh, we have a lot of other wonderful events. We have biology and chemistry and archaeology. We have robotics. We have rocket building, um, we have the natural sciences. It's a very organic uh, event, if you will. Bring your friends, bring your families, bring your students, bring your teachers, bring your community. Um, 
Come, enjoy, stay the whole day. We want to show that science is fun. We think science and engineering is fun. It's just enjoyable, it's fun, and I think what happens is when we have families coming to see, see uh, coming to Science Day, what they see is they see their parents enjoying science and the kids start to enjoy some of the activities and they get excited about it and we hope they take that excitement back into their lives. There's all kinds of hands-on, interactive activities and experiments for you to enjoy. For more information and to find out how you can be a volunteer for Rockville Science Day, head to rockvillesciencedayorg For County Report This Week, I'm Kathy Dantzler. Montgomery County Public Schools recently hosted a community dialogue meeting in Gaithersburg, and there was quite a turnout. MCPS-TV has that story. We really define the goals and the purposes of our programs. Montgomery County Public Schools first choice study community dialogue drew hundreds of people to Gaithersburg High School on Wednesday, April 6th. They came to discuss the recently released recommendations for choice and application programs in Montgomery County Public Schools. In January 2015, MCPS commissioned a comprehensive study that examined how well these programs advance our school system's core values of excellence and equity and whether the programs are meeting their intended goals. You know, we've had these programs for many years. The board was concerned with whether or not these programs are still meeting their intended purpose. And the board commissioned a study, the Meta study, to really examine these programs to see whether or not they are achieving their goals. Are they really moving the needle in terms of student achievement? The study included MCPS's elementary and middle school language immersion programs, the elementary school center program for highly gifted students, magnet and other selected admissions programs at the middle and high school levels, and the middle and high school consortia programs. School system officials provided an overview of the findings and recommendations in the study. Despite the fact that our enrollment has increased significantly over time, the number of seats and available seats in these programs has not kept pace, as well as telling us that it's time to look at some of the ways in which we decide who gets into what program. Event attendees then participated in roundtable discussions to share their views about what choice and application programs could look like. The support of the entire community is behind the magnet programs, is behind the immersion programs, and the people in this room don't want to see change. We really want to make it an equitable system. It should be like a point-based system and not a certain limited number of seats. There will be two additional choice study community dialogues on April 18th at Kennedy High School and May 5th at Walter Johnson High School. To learn more, visit the MCPS website and search Choice Study. It's no surprise that America's demographics are changing drastically. To shed light on what is the future of Latinas in the United States, MCTV's Carolina Galeano has this report. Latinas are one of the most powerful and fast-growing segments of the U.S. population. Yet, how can we describe them in one sentence? They don't all speak Spanish. Here to shed more light on who are Latinas and what is their economic and political future in the United States is Lauren Lee Baez, a Dominican and academic who speaks to her experience as well as her research. I throw people off. Well, actually, I identify as Afro-Latina. Latinas have been ostracized, isolated, stereotyped, um, objectified, and we have this unique opportunity now to be in the front seat and drive ourselves into whatever we want. And, and no longer having to be that maid in the movies. And what did attendees have to say? We're one of the largest consumers. We make up 1.2 trillion, I think she said. I didn't know it was that much. We are contributing so much to the economy, but at the same time it worries me because that seems that we're not saving. That's great that Latinas are buying clothes and we're purchasing pharmaceuticals and food and, this and all that, but at the same time we're not saving. While financial security is of concern, Ms. Baez was sure to associate economic power with political power. Social scientists are also predicting that by 2060, not too far from 2044, Latinas are expected to become 30% of the total female population. What are we going to do with that power? What do we want the future to be? Who do we want to invite to that conversation? and to that political movement, because it has to be a political movement when women, despite of color and race and creed, are still getting paid less than their male counterparts for more work. 
That's unbelievable in 2016. For County Report this week, from Tacoma Park Campus, Carolina Galeano. Coming up next on County Report this week, we'll introduce you to our Pet of the Week. And it's official. County leaders have proclaimed April 22nd as a day in the life of Montgomery County. We'll tell you how to take part right after this. Vote between April 14 and 21 at one of Montgomery County's early voting centers. Visit 777vote.org to find voting hours and locations. Choose the most convenient location by checking the website for updated wait times. Did you forget to register? During early voting, same-day voter registration is a new option to make sure your vote is counted. Bring Maryland ID with you to make the process easy. The new voting system is also on the website. Remember, your time, your voice, your vote. Mark your calendars. The Montgomery County Green Fest is coming to the Tacoma Park Community Center on April 30th. This year's Green Fest promises to be a fun-filled day of entertainment, community, and learning. Enjoy live music, learn how to green your home and neighborhood, watch an environmental film, and visit the exhibitors. Green Fest has activities for all ages and interests. Make sure you stop by on April 30th and explore your path to a greener life. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The Montgomery County Council has officially proclaimed April 22nd as a day in the life of Montgomery County. My MC Media's Maureen Chaudhary reports. Now therefore be it resolved that the County Council of Montgomery County, Maryland hereby designates Friday, April 22nd, 2016 as a day in the life of Montgomery County. And we encourage residents with cameras and mobile devices con to contribute to this unique project that will document the diverse aspects of Montgomery County. It's official. The County Council has declared April 22nd a day in the life of Montgomery County. The event is celebrating its fourth year, and on this day, Montgomery Community Media will be documenting what a day in the life is like for residents all over the county through social media. Day in the life of Montgomery County is a really unique project in as much as the many day in the life projects around the world, but this is one actually done in real time. Uh, instead of a coffee table book or a calendar, you can actually see the photos going up on our website and our social media feeds in real time over the 24-hour period in April 22nd. So it's a very exciting project project and we're really happy to be a part of it. We want to get out and take a lot of pictures and really show what Montgomery County has to offer. It's an awesome county. And this year each photo and video sent will have an added benefit for Mana Food Center. So this year there's a special incentive for people to participate. The Slave and Family Foundation will give a dollar for every photo or video submitted and we really appreciate that support as well. Want to join in? It's easy. All they do is snap a photo of what's going on in the world on April 22nd. They can email it to us at pix, P-I-X, at mymcmedia.org or on Twitter at hashtag D-I-T-L. That's all they have to do and it'll be up on our TV channels and on our website. In Rockville, I'm Maureen Chaudhary for MyMC Media. Kensington celebrates the International Day of the Book on April 24th, and the master of ceremonies for this literary event is author Steve Piacente. There's something for everyone, and I'll say that, uh, first of all, the festival has grown from 10 authors and 50 people in 2005 to more than 100 authors, and we're going to have 6,000 people here this year. Uh, second, we have featured authors like Michael Durda, Pulitzer Prize winner and Washington Post book critic, Colonel Mac McGee, who's one of the original Tuskegee Airmen. We have stuff for kids, one, two, three, Andre, the great zucchini, and there's going to be music up and down the street with the Rockasonics and the Nighthawks and Eli August and the abandoned buildings. Um, the the, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the volunteers and the local businesses and the literary organizations that have made this all possible. Um, authors getting the chance to meet the people who wrote the books and talk with them, where did the story come from, what's your writing process, all of that is going to be involved as well. And we can't forget the food trucks. You can find more information about the Kensington Book Festival on its website. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? Our pet of the week is Diva. She's an American Staffordshire Bulldog mix. She is a love. She loves to cuddle, but she's very high energy. She's a great dog. She loves to play with toys. She loves her ball. She wants to play for hours on end. And then her favorite thing to do is get in your lap and snuggle. She's actually a very good cuddler. 
please visit Diva on the web at Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center.gov or give us a call at 240-773-5900. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.